Happy Scientist podcast. Each episode is designed to make you more focused, more productive, and more satisfied in the lab. You can find us online at bitesizebio.com slash happy scientist. Your hosts are Kenneth Vogt, founder of the executive coaching firm Vera Claritas, and Dr. Nick Oswald, PhD, bioscientist, and founder of Bite Size Bio. Hello and welcome to the Happy Scientist podcast from Bite Size Bio. If you want to become a happier, healthier, and more productive scientist, you are in the right place. I'm Nick Oswald, the founder of BiteSizeBio.com, and with me is the driving force of this podcast, Kenneth Vogt, my friend, mentor, and founder of the coaching company, Vera Claritas. In recent podcasts, we've talk, been talking about giving and receiving help, and we're going to extend that theme today with a discussion on whether you can give too much. So let's bring in the man himself, Ken. How are you doing hey. today? Doing good, Nick. How are you? Good. It was interesting. Uh, I originally thought of this as kind of a two-part thing, but Nick and I were talking about this after the second part, and he said, there's a third part. And I went, there is? <laughs> and he says, yeah. What about when, when people give too much of themselves? And I thought, oh, yes, that's true. We really need to cover that. Because you know, Initially, we talked about, about how you got to go your own way. you gotta, you got to pick your own path. you got to not be led by other people and then we then we talked about okay now that you picked your own way you're gonna need help you're gonna need support you're gonna you're gonna want people to gather around you and give to you but of course part of the the process of getting people to give to you is you give to them but for many people they get trapped in this thing about giving away everything and it it, it becomes a, a pattern where they just totally give themselves away all the time and and they never get as much back as they give or maybe don't get anything back at all and you might wonder how do i get out of that state how do i how do i break that chain you know because your nature may be that i want to i want to help other people or your nature may be it may be more insidious it may be i give away so that people will love me <laughs> and you know that's a that's a counterproductive way of approaching approaching your career a little in your life now there's an interesting thing I, I was I was pondering here the last couple of days, Nick, that is unique to science in that you do this thing called peer review, mm -hmm. and I, I think from from an outside perspective of a non scientist, we hear that, and we probably don't hear it correctly. We probably don't hear it the way you mean it. That is, uh, peer review is that is that your work is being reviewed or even probably more accurately, your, the conclusions of your work are being reviewed by, by fellow experts. But the way many of us would hear it is peer review is my peers reviewing me. And I suspect that many scientists are acting that way themselves. They are looking for peer review. In other words, they're looking for approval from their peers, a personal approval. Not approval for their ideas, not approval for their conclusions, or for their logic, but personal approval. And that is, that is the source for many folks of giving too much away. So I wonder if you could, you could weigh in on that a little, Nick. Hmm, that's an interesting one. I have never thought of that angle being specific to scientists. Uh, I would say that I think one of the things about this idea of giving away too much is that I think... I don't know. I think that most people don't even realize that, that they're doing it or that it's a problem. Um, mm. And 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 I, I guess that could be the same here. Is that if you think that's how, you know, if you're subconsciously or whatever you, you're you're copying someone else who is you know giving without um, without condition in within you know within their profession, that I think that that could be. You know, being aware of it is the is is the first step. Um, I know I because I, I, I think I had that tendency, and you pointed it out to me, and it was a big surprise to me. <laughs> well, yeah, and and I think it's because a lot of folks who who get into the scientific field, especially bioscience, they 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 have an altruistic nature to them. They they do want to help mankind, or 
or you know even even animals or plants that you know the life they want to help life and and so it it makes sense that somebody who is already approaching the life the world and life from that perspective would sometimes have a tendency to give too much so the notion here is to understand when to give and when to when to hold back and uh, you used the term earlier you spoke of being conditional and we, we've talked about about giving in terms of transactions before which is fine you know there's nothing wrong with i give you something and in response in return you give me something as long as we're both happy with what we get out of that transaction that's fine there are other times where an altruistic giving is the right thing to do where you're giving with no idea of a return coming back to you you're just you're just doing it you're giving to the world you know you're 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 putting in the work to to do something that will benefit mankind or or, or a smaller group, your company, your your lab, your you know the people you work with, your your community, whatever it is that it is, altruism is just fine, but you have to understand when it is you are being altruistic and when it is you should be involved in a transaction, and when it is you should just say no. I don't even want to be involved in a transaction. I'm not going to give anymore. I don't have any more to give. So. That's part of the, the the issue there. Sometimes you may look at something, boy, it would really be good if I would give in this situation. It would it would be good for the world, or it would be good for others, or it would be a great transaction. But you don't have it to give. You know, if somebody offers to sell you a you know a brand new Bentley for ten thousand dollars, yes, that's a that's a great thing. You should give ten thousand dollars for that, as long as you have ten thousand dollars. <laughs> If you don't have it, then you shouldn't give it. You shouldn't. You shouldn't break yourself. You shouldn't. You shouldn't uh, spend the mortgage payments on that just because it's a good deal. Yeah. So, yeah, I, well, I have a kind of an, an all, well, it's not an alternative. It's just well, it's another way to look at that is that maybe you know as well as you know differentiating between conditional and unconditional, and you know when what, what's the difference and when. When you are, when it should be a transaction, making sure you get what you what you deserve, it's a, it's more globally than that. Is just making just including yourself in the giving, so that sure. you make sure that if you're looking after, you know, the same extent that you look after other people, you look after yourself. Right. So let, let me uh, introduce a paradigm for that to to put some to wrap something around that because I've noticed that people often get this wrong they, they can't different they can't get the differentiation straight because we we see a dichotomy of either i serve myself or i serve others and and my notion may be if i'm serving others i can't be serving myself and if i serve myself i cannot be serving others and so the the problem then is that when you try to give to other people you may see it that well, I must do it in such a way that I exclude myself from from any gain, and vice versa. If you start to get any gain out of it, you think I'm no longer serving others, and and so you 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 bust into this black and white world, and there are people out there in your world, in your life, in your lab, in your company that live in service to self. And they can be very difficult people to deal with because they're very selfish. They're all about what's in it for me. They can be narcissistic. You know, I don't want to get into pathology about this, but you know, the point being is that outlook in life, usually uh, for those who, who prefer the idea of serving others, they look at those, those folks and, and they go, I don't want anything to do with that. I don't want to be like that. I don't. And, and I don't like to be around those people and I don't like to work with those people and I don't and I definitely don't like to be under the thumb of those people and so they they hurl themselves into further service to others see I'm not like that I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna be like that but then then they start cutting themselves off as, as you noted so rather than thinking of move that service to others is better than service to self an even better notion 
than service to others is service to all. It's not other. You know, I'm part of everything. You know, I and you are just as important as the next person. And if you are operating in such a way where you're always doing good for other people, instead of seeing them as others, see them as just people. And then recognize you also are people. So when I do something of benefit for Nick, if it's also a benefit for me, that made it that much better. It doesn't have to be exclusively for Nick and to my, to my detriment. And it doesn't have to be exclusively to me to Nick's detriment. So if you can start thinking of including yourself in the group that you're serving. So you may look at it and say, I'm serving a certain community or I'm, you know, I'm working on, on something that will help people with this problem or, or I'm working on this that will just be good for mankind or for, for animal life or general life on a planet and recognize you're a piece of that. You're a part of it. You'll, you're one step in a better direction toward not giving away everything and not giving away too much so that you get hurt yourself. Does that, does that resonate with you, Nick? Yeah, definitely. I think that one other angle on that that strikes me is that sometimes when you think that you're doing good for other people by putting yourself out, then it's not actually the best for yourself. Well, it's definitely not the best for you, but it's not the best for them either because they become, can become reliant on you and you're not giving them the chance to grow and so on. So it's got to be balanced. Um, and it's a good to do. A, it was a definitely a good step for me um, uh, and still is actually to, to evaluate where, where, you, where that balance is for you. You know, are you too far in one direction? And if you're too far in the selfish direction, then that, that obviously has to change as well. But if, you, um, if you're too far in the selfless direction, then that's equally as damaging for not just yourself, but for the other people around you potentially. Sure. You think of those two words too, selfish and selfless. We hear selfish and we see that, hear that as a negative. And selfless, oh, well, that's, that makes them a really good person. It's not a good idea to be selfless. It, it's, you, you, should be part of, you should be a part of everything that's going on in your world. So I'm not, I'm not arguing toward being selfish the, to the exclusion of others, but to be selfless to the exclusion of yourself is just as bad. It's the exclusion that's the problem, not, not you know, which direction your, your attentions are going. So we'll drop the exclusion part, and that's, that's where the, the solution is, will come from. I had an interesting experience the other day. Um, I mentioned in a past episode I had a stroke a few months ago, and so I haven't been driving lately, so I've been using Uber. So I had an Uber driver the other day, and we got to talking, and he had a stroke very similar to mine four years ago. Well, this is good news for me because here's this guy. He's driving his car. He's talking just fine. He doesn't have any speech problems. I saw him using his his impaired hand, and it didn't look impaired. He at one point got out of the car and walked around to my side. I was on, in the back seat on the passenger side. When I got out, he walked around to the, to the uh, my side of the car. But something he said when he came over, he got there, then he stopped. And I got out of the car, and he says, you'll notice I didn't help you. And I said, yeah. He says, yes, the reason I didn't help you is because it wouldn't help you. I thought, whoa, this guy gets it. He, he wants to give. He wanted to help me. In fact, uh, we're going to have dinner next week so I can talk to him more about his stroke recovery. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, he's certainly willing to give, but he understands he needs to be in the process. He could he could have thought I'm to feel good about myself. I'm going to I'm going to help this guy. I'm because I've recovered. I want to show I'm recovered and I'm in better shape than he, than he is and you know, there's all kinds of motivations that could be there for giving to others that aren't actually so good. You might be trying to look good rather than to be good. And and so, so, so that brings us to the next thing I was thinking about. How do we uncover your motives for giving? Why are you giving? Well, there's some questions you could ask yourself. 
about why you're giving to others. And some of these questions, you're going to hear them and you go, oh man, that is me. And some of them you're going to hear and go, oh, I don't do that. That's, that's not what I'm about. But, but consider some of these things. Do you secretly believe that you deserve less than others? And therefore, you have to give away things to other people because, you know, they deserve them, but you don't. Are you compensating for secretly believing you deserve more than others? Are you trying to hide the fact that you think you're better than other people and so you're going to give it away to, to, try, to, to try and show you, see, no, 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 I'm not like that. I'm not, I'm not doing that at all. Do you believe that giving earns you virtue points that make you superior to others or that giving absolves you from previous selfishness or existing character flaws? Are you using your giving in such a way as to fix something that's external to what you're giving? So when you start thinking about what is my motivation for this? Why am I doing this? And in some cases you're going to go, well, I'm just doing it because, you know, it needs to be done. Uh, you know, that's, that's what we tell ourselves. Is that really true? I mean, really, really question yourself as to whether or not something is really true. And, and sometimes we'll just ask ourselves, am I doing this because I, I think I'm less deserving? And our answer is no. And if you could just ask yourself a second question, really? Is that really true? <laughs> it's amazing how often your answer will change. It's, a, it's just this little self-examination process you can go through. You know, you ask yourself, is this so? And is that really true? And, and it will uncover for you why things are happening. And you may be shocked when you do this little examination. The next time you give something, especially if you give something in such a way that it hurt you a bit or that it was costly to you, or you felt like, man, I, I, I shouldn't, I didn't have time for that, or I, I didn't have the resources, but I did it anyway, and why did I do that? And it's a good time to, to ask yourself that. Why am I doing this? What, what's, what's actually driving this? Do I, am, am I trying to look good? Am I, am I trying to not feel bad anymore? You know, what, what is happening here that is causing me to give in a situation where it's just not the right thing to do in that moment? Or where it's costing me, where I'm not, I'm not also benefiting from this giving. And, and understand, you can give in such a way that, that what your benefit is, is, uh, is indirect. It's, you know, when, when you help your, your three-year-old get dressed, it doesn't benefit you at all. Of, you know, well, they're not going to make you late for work. But, you know, <laughs> but, you know, they get dressed. And uh, great, now they're dressed. And, I, and I, that's good. You know, I'm... I'm feeling good about being a good parent, and I just, and and that's fine. But be aware of why I'm doing that. Yes, I did it because I love my three-year-old, but I also did it because you know I I want to feel good about myself, and that's fine. But be aware of it, and and then you'll then you will be making choices because then there'll be other times when when your six-year-old is bothering you to tie your shoes. You're like, man, I have taught you how to tie your shoes. Tie your own shoe. You can do it. You know, <laughs> I remember. I remember when I was a little kid, and I was probably about five at the time. And I remember walking up to my mother, who was getting ready for work, and it was before school. And I stuck out my my shoe to her to 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 tie my shoe. And she said, "Would you like to learn how to tie your shoe?" And I was like, "Yeah." This being subservient to someone else, being at somebody else's, you know, under somebody else's. Total control all the time. Yeah, I want to know how to do this, and and that was it. She showed me once, and I and I have tied my shoes ever since. Well, except for lately. <laughs> but you know, um, sometimes when we're giving, we're giving because people are asking us, and maybe they're asking because we've never bothered it to, to check in with them to see if we could help them to learn to do it themselves. Or if we can give them a step up, and I think a lot of you, especially if you've got you've got you know undergrads working for you, or, or you know or others in your lab, part of the mentoring process is to help them to learn to do for themselves, and so giving to them actually isn't much of a gift at that point. It'd be far better of a gift to give them the tools that they need so that they can they can stand on their own two feet.
It's a really, really important introspection on one hand, but also it's it's a good experience builder, I would how would you say that? Experience or wisdom builder, if you like. Because often the first thing you think of that would be the right thing to do is n- to help someone is not the, it's not actually the best thing. You, you, your, your driver there had um, experience that meant that he knew that you needed something other than what people might think, which is you didn't need to be helped, but you needed to be left to get on with it. Sure. Um, so there's that and as I well. I had plenty of drivers like that. They want to help, and I'm like, First off, you don't know how to help, and I don't know what to tell you to help. So just let me get out of the car, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a real balance. It's a real balance um, there of between motivation and knowledge, and um, understanding what your motivation is. Kind of half the battle, I would say, and um, looking to see if there's a better way you could do it. <laughs> Tending towards allowing people to enabling people rather than just um, just doing for them. Is probably the, is probably the balance. I don't know. That that, that yeah. just strikes me. Definitely, and you know, I mean, there there are times when somebody just genuinely does need your help, and it may not be because of, of incapacity or incap- inability on their part. It may just be circumstances of the moment that they just they just need some some support. And if you have the capacity to help, well, absolutely do it. You know, I'm we're certainly not advocating not giving here but we are advocating not giving yourself away you know, if you get to where it's just costing you uh, then too much where you, more than you can pay well that's that's not good that's not sustainable the other thing is to recognize here that that this isn't a zero-sum game we're not in a contest with other people to see who can give more you don't win at the end of the day because you gave more than them in a contest that that that's not that's not who wins so you know, we can all win in this in that we're and then we're working together efficiently and capably and we're we're strengthening each other and building on each other and everyone who has worked on an effective team who's had that experience realizes man that's what i want to have every time if you haven't had that experience, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> um, and I, but I would suggest to you, if you're not having that experience, it may well be that you are not, you're not receiving. You're not allowing other people to give to you. So you know, it's 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 something to to give consideration to. The so so here we are. Go all right. I, I realize I shouldn't just give myself away. And, and, I, and I've, I've done a little questioning myself and I've seen what my motives are and I'm not real thrilled with what I've, what I've learned about myself. But now what? What do I do? How do I find the line? How do I know when this is a good time to give and this other is not a good time to give? Well, you, there are some signals. You can think about it this way. Healthy giving feels good. That is, you're not going to feel bad after giving in a in a setting that was that was healthy if you feel bad after giving really examine that why did i why did i get into that situation where i felt bad and maybe you felt taken advantage of maybe you felt like oh i i i picked some bad priorities here and i let some important things go to do this when i shouldn't have if you if you're chastising yourself afterward okay something that was telling you right there that, that you, you didn't choose properly when it came time to give. And sometimes that just kind of like happens on automatic. Somebody asks you and you just automatically say yes. Well, that's a dangerous thing because th- there are times when you just should say no. And there are times when it, you know, uh, sometimes we don't say no because we're worried that, oh man, they're going to think bad things about me or, or it's really going to impact them to the negative and, like you know what? Give people a chance to solve their own problems. You're not the you're not the superhero to solve everybody's problems for them. Let them let them be engaged in their own world and and deal with the, what they have to deal with. And oftentimes, somebody asks you for something and you say, "Man, I just can't give right now." They're like, "Oh, that's no problem. It's okay." They're not thinking bad of you after that. They just 
they you know they they saw a potential solution to their problem they asked oh that wasn't the solution okay fine they move on to the next thing now the next thing about healthy giving feels sustainable so when you have when when you give in a setting you feel like man i could just keep doing this i could i could do that every time it's asked of me well then you know that's that's some healthy giving but if you're feeling like if i keep this up i'm going to burn out if i have to do that one more time it's going to break me or it's going to drain my reserves you know then you know you're you're going down the wrong road now, another thing about giving is when you don't give stinginess feels bad if you held back from giving just out of of uh, you know i just don't want to i i want to hold this for myself i want to keep my time i want to keep my resources whatever if that doesn't feel good well again that this this is telling you okay i didn't make a good choice there you know, you want to make a choice that's sustainable for you and for everyone else but you got to take care of yourself first and that's not say take care of yourself exclusively but you are a finite resource you can be drained by other people and there'll be nothing left and then you won't be able to give anymore so if you really care about giving and i i suspect most of you that is your your main motivation you really do want to give well give in such a way that you can keep giving because if you give it all away then that's it it's over and and you know you can then you're then you're of no good to yourself and you're no good to anyone else you, there's that great analogy of course Ken, about that, about the oxygen masks in the in the plane of, you know, the, the oxygen masks come down in the plane because the cabin's depressurized, you spend all your time helping the other person get theirs on, and then you collapse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you, you put yourself on You will on be strengthened person. to help yeah. many others if you exactly. have your mask on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, okay, I realize I've had a problem with this. I realize now how I can tell when I'm having a problem in the moment. I realize how I can, that I, I need to make a shift. So how am I gonna make that shift? Well, here's some things to think about. Martyrdom is a trap. If you're doing this where you're giving yourself away so you, so you can feel expended like, well, that's it, I did everything I could. I couldn't have done one more thing. You can tell by the fact that I'm dying here, you know? Well, that, that is not the solution. That is a that's a lack of wisdom. It's great to be compassionate. I mean, compassion is a powerful force, but compassion without wisdom is, is destructive. It's mostly destructive to you. It doesn't work. You gotta, you gotta temper your compassion with wisdom. And one of the other and, ways that that can work though, Ken, is, is that you're, you know, that goes back to looking at the motivation there. Are you doing that so that you can gain points to get expect back from someone else? Yeah, exactly. Or you have a messiah complex. You know, <laughs> I'm here to save everyone. You know, if it wasn't for me, no one would survive, you know. Yeah, or the more I do, the more they owe, you know. Yeah, oh well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we talked about that a little earlier. And you're really looking looking at your honest motives. See, this, this is not something you have to discuss with, with anybody else. You don't have to talk to people you work with or your boss. You don't have to talk to your spouse about it, even if you don't want to. You or your best friend's. It's something to know for yourself. What is really motivating me here? What is what is really making me tick? And it, it's good to know. I'm not telling you to change it either, but be aware of what it is. Now, there's another adage that is that's good to remember. There is more joy in giving than in receiving. And you're like, yeah, that's it. That's why I like to give all the time. Well, this, that's wonderful. But you know what? Stop being so selfish about it. Give other people a chance to have some joy every once in a while. Let them do some giving. So that you can you can be on the receiving end too. You know, you don't have to just give. Uh, let other people enjoy giving too. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. It's, so, it's you know, don't don't be afraid to accept what others give either. The sometimes we look at it like, well, I'd like to receive, but you know, what will they think about me? Or they're gonna think I'm weak, or they're gonna or it's gonna undercut my political position. It's like it's just not true. Or it's embarrassing to receive the compliment or or whatever. Right. You know, you just have to some people well, I know that that's uh Yes, I, do you, Nick, how do you do you know how to receive a compliment? 
I do know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really simple. When somebody compliments you, you say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. There's no, you don't you don't have to you don't have to give it, oh well you know I'm not that great it's, it's it it wasn't that hard no just thank you that's it they 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 have their position on it they they have their perception of what it was they have told you and now the good thing for you is just let them give that yeah and receive and yeah and you when you receive it then you get the the benefit so why not exactly why not now sometimes people are are offering things to you. And so we're telling you in those situations, you know, be sure to be receptive. Sometimes they're not offering. So sometimes they just don't know to offer. So don't be afraid to ask for help. So, you know, we think, oh man, that's, that's the worst. I'm going to look weak. I'm going to look deficient. It's like, no, you're going to look human. You're going to look like a team player. You're going to look like somebody that trusts them. People like that. <laughs> people, and again, people want to have the joy of giving. Give them a shot. Give them a chance. Now, the other thing that can happen, too, is that, okay, maybe you're not just uh, you're asking for help and asking them to be altruistic. Maybe, you know, you have given to them and it's time to call in those favors. Do so. I mean, don't do it in a, in a uh, you know, I, I've got you by the short hairs kind of way, but it's like, you know, I, I, I did this and that for you, but, man, it, it's time. I need, to, I need to call that chip in. I, I, I need some help here. So what you're doing there too is you're letting them know that hey I I can't you you owed me but I'm about to let you off the hook for owing me this is what I need and then you'll be free again you know so again you can do it in such a way that it isn't like I got you and you have to do this for me that's that's not not what what you're what you're signaling toward you're saying you know I helped you and now I really need your help and I'll really appreciate that and so. Now, giving becomes this, this not just a two-way thing, but it, it becomes a moving thing. It's, it's a flow. You know, the, the giving comes in, the giving goes out, you know, and, and it will never stop. And you'll stop doing this thing where you, it's all going in one direction. You'll stop doing this thing where, where you're giving to the point of doing damage. And we've, we've all heard the, you know, that, that saying, you know, give till it hurts. What a stupid thing to say. <laughs> it, it shouldn't hurt. I mean, I'm not saying that it shouldn't come at an effort. That, you know, it's, it's like going to the gym. You know, you go and you work out until you feel like you put in a hard workout. But you don't do it until you've hurt yourself. The, the objective isn't to injure yourself. You know, yes, you know, fully engage, but don't give it all away. Don't, don't do it to the point where there's nothing left. And I suppose the, the kind of uh, the biology specific way to look at that is that all of biology is about cycles. And so why would this be any different? You've got to, it's got to, to for it to be sustainable, it has to be a cycle, it has to, to go, go one way and then the other. And um, if you just keep it going in one direction, then that's an unsustainable reaction or whatever. <laughs> exactly. I, I heard an interesting podcast the other day of uh, um, a woman who was, uh, she was actually um, working for the forestry department in, in Canada. And this is, you know, back a few decades ago where they had been clear cutting trees and then they were planting trees. And her job was just to see how, how the, the, the new saplings were doing. And they weren't doing well. And she was doing research and trying to figure it out because, you know, they, and what she started to notice was that there was fungus in the soil that on healthy trees, she'd find that fungus on their roots and on healthy, unhealthy trees, it wasn't there. And it was often on, even on different species trees nearby and, and it, you know, trees uh, that they would consider to be weeds that were in the way of their, of their, the trees they wanted to grow for lumber. Um, and, but she, she was young and she felt like she felt like she couldn't talk about it. And in fact, at the time, she didn't feel like she had enough of a degree to talk about it. She ended up having, she ended up going back and and getting a more advanced degree before she finally started talking about it and published about this. And she she was one of the first people who realized that trees were communicating with each other via this this fungal network. 
and they were sharing nutrients between one another and that it was all part of a of a a system that it was like a neural network that that shared information and resources but that sharing was absolutely required when these trees tried to stand alone they didn't do well um, if they gave everything away they didn't do well they, they had to they had to be part of a system and you know we're we're we're, we're surrounded by networks in life you know, and I don't just mean human networks. I'm talking about biological networks. And it, it should make sense to us, especially those of you who are so well-educated in this, that, you know, I'm part of a network too. I am I am also a biological creature and uh, involved in in biological activity. And, and even beyond that, it's it psychological activity. It's part of, it's well, it's, it's come out of biology. So... It, don't cut yourself off and don't give yourself all away. You don't have to, you don't have to be a sacrificial lamb. No, I suppose that takes us neatly back to the original idea about, um, you know, the, uh, the uh, original idea of this kind of series of three podcasts or mini series of three podcasts about kind of being in a network, how to not be pulled along by the network, but also how to use it and how to give back to it and how to, you know, that you are, that, that you are like that. That's a great analogy, the, the trees, um, you know, communicating in that way. It's exactly the same. We're biological. So um, that kind of, I think that's kind of a neat way to, to bring this one to a, to a close. And, uh, and, and, the, uh, and the, the bonus uh, piece of advice there as well about the, you know, I'm too. Uh, I'm not experienced enough, so I can't, this observation won't be right. So I'm not going to say anything. Oh man, that's that's definitely something we should cover at some point. <laughs> Don't do oh, that. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah. That that was something that really struck me about this because now she's seen as a world expert on this, but at the time she she felt so insignificant that she couldn't speak up, and she may well have introduced an idea ten years earlier that would have done a lot of good. Yep. But yep. she was she was scared and she held back. Yeah, it's a common problem, and I think we can. It's probably something worth discussing at another uh, in another another episode. But I think that rounds off a great series there, Ken. Of uh, of and uh, again, it might be worth people going back and looking li- listening to the previous two episodes. You know, listening to this again now that we've, you know, you've you've gone through it once. It's really about the bigger picture about what it means to be part of a network. You know, uh, whether that's in a, a family or a profession or a lab or whatever, and how to both bring out your own, pe- you know, be yourself within that network, but also how to give and take within that network in a healthy way. Yeah, I think this is a great, a great topic, actually, Ken. And um, that brings me to the the housekeeping parts of it so we'll there's there will be a summary i don't think we mentioned any specific resources this time um but there'll be a summary of the um of the the podcast the main points of the podcast in the show notes which you can find at bitesizebio.com the happy scientist and um this is episode 30 um and of course you can find the show notes for all other episodes as well in the same the same place and uh also, if you want to get more from of what we are, uh, you more of this great advice that Ken is freely giving out here, you can look at facebook.com the, uh, forward slash the Happy Scientist Club, which is all one word, and we'll be in there giving some um, you know further insights and different ways to look at this as well. And it would be great to see you in there. And finally, remember that episodes one to nine of this podcast, if you haven't done this already. It's worth going back and looking to those because those are where we talk about the fundamental principles um, some or some fundamental principles that will really help you to, um, you know, to, to calibrate and reset your outlooks on things and understand yourself a bit better. Really, those things really help me. Um, and so one to nine, episodes one to nine of this podcast are where you'll find those. So again, Ken, thanks for a, a really, another really insightful topic. And very well delivered. And thanks say. for <laughs> suggesting it, Nick. Cause it <laughs> oh, well, uh, then again, yeah, I should say that. Yeah, I should accept that, that the last one was me. But the first two were you. <laughs> <laughs>
So, again, thanks, Ken, and we will Thank you. catch you all next time. Bye now. Scientist is brought to you by Bite Size Bio, your mentor in the lab. Bite Size Bio features thousands of articles and webinars contributed by hundreds of PhD scientists and scientific companies who freely offer their hard won wisdom and solutions to the Bite Size Bio community.